Hello my soccer universe, it is very late and I have to get up early tomorrow, it should be bedtime by now, but I decided now let's do the video on everything that happened in Germany and Austria over the past week, which is quite a lot, we have twice uh, we have to talk about the cup, twice we have to talk about the league, and what can we take from it, yeah we still have uh, Dortmund and Leipzig in the running for the cup, we have also a surprise uh, entry in the semi-final as we will see, in Germany, in the league, it was of course everything was overshadowed by the big superstar stri superstar striker duel between Holland and Lewandowski, which went back and forth. But of course, Lewandowski in the end turns out to be the winner in that one in a round that actually saw Leipzig for a brief time take the lead in the table, and everyone else behind. It was actually really set up nicely for a Dortmund win which didn't happen, so Leverkusen uh, scooched in a little bit. In Austria we have a first cup final for LASK since 1999, long awaited and I'm still <laughs> not that excited about it, we'll talk about that when we get there. And in the league LASK is back on a winning track, but more importantly it, the top six race gets really really tight with two rounds left to go, we had a change jump right into the action uh, and the German Cup was ac actually a little bit a letdown at first because Regensburg against Bremen needed to be postponed due to a Covid outbreak. Um, so the first game we had was Gladbach against Dortmund which was for most of the time an open affair. Dortmund having a slight light advantage, having a goal by Holland already dis dis disallowed and it's the best player over the last few weeks in uh, Sancho who actually gets the winner for Dortmund Dort after a nice counter-attack. Kiel, uh, the surprise team that had already eliminated Bayern Munich, wins relatively easy at fourth tier uh, rot Essen. And then Leipzig-Wolfsburg was one of those games where I think Wolfsburg should not have lost that one. The Wechos, we missed the penalty, they had many chances in the first half and Leipzig was more or less hang, hang on. And then when Paulsen makes it 1-0, the game was uh, sad in a way, Huang Hijan makes it 2-0 uh, just before the end when Wolf Wolf Wolfsburg was pressing. But did, this must have hurt for Wolfsburg, a uh, team that has been in good f uh, form, as we see, didn't really carry on to the league. But before we get to the league, um, we have now a date also for uh, this last quarterfinal, which will be played on Wednesday, the 7th of April. And today was also the draw for the semi-final, where Dortmund has a home game against Kiel. Should be easy, but Kiel is not that bad and Regensburg or Bremen will have a home game against Leipzig. So it's all still set up for Dortmund-Leipzig final, but maybe we'll have an upset here and there, which in the German Cup can always, always happen. Moving on to what happened in the Bundesliga, dreary nil-nil between Schalke and Mainz. Schalke on the fifth coach this season. We could talk a whole, whole lot, I really don't want to. Uh, speaking of coach, I mean, since Rose is announced he's going to Dortmund, Gladbach is losing, 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 and also manages to lose to Leverkusen. Uh, a real fun game was the one between Frankfurt and Stuttgart, uh, where the first half maybe was not so great. Uh, there were some, I think, a slight advantage for, Stu uh, for Stuttgart. Then, because uh, Frankfurt, you know, they're losing Freddy Bobic, the sporting director, um, having just lost to Bremen after the U1 against Bayern. So, you know, it was a little bit, where is, is the team going? Uh, in second half, Kostic and Silva, who were both uh, starting for the, for, for the first time, Kostic scores a goal, which is uh, disallowed for offside. And then Stuttgart comes ahead and Kalajic, uh, I mean, he already had a big chance uh, or, or early in the first, second half and then uh, he makes it 1-0, a little bit lucky because it was, uh, it took a wicked deflection. But right a minute later, Kostic just repeats the goal that he just, uh, he scored uh, 15 minutes earlier, 10, yeah, yeah 15 minutes earlier, early, almost a carbon copy, makes it 1-1, then Frankfurt was pressing for the winner just could not find. I think the hit once uh, the bar was not meant to be. Uh, we had Freiburg uh, losing at home to Leipzig. Leipzig really having no trouble whatsoever. Nkunku, Sirloth with another goal and Forsberg uh, assisted by Sirloth gets the goals and that at that point put uh, Freiburg, uh, Leipzig uh, into first place 
interestingly, Freiburg and Leipzig was uh, promoted at the same time and have been in the league ever since. Hertha turns a game around against Augsburg uh, and then another game, Wolfsburg like at Leipzig. I mean, they concede early through Baumgartner. Then they are by far have more chances, get the equalizer. I mean, at that point, that, that, was, that was maybe a little bit lucky, but once Wechert gets the equalizer on, on, on the card, Wolfsburg had more control of the game. However, it's Kramaric who gets the goal for, Wall, for Hoffenheim and it's 2 1 at the half. Second half, it's all Wolfsburg. Wechost hits at least once the post. Uh, they were pressing for, uh, forward and of course committing too many men and so the big scene of the, ga of, of the game was then when in the 94th minute Munoz de Boer uh, runs on an, on an empty goal and Otavio, interesting he has played for Lask at one point, I mean a flying tackle, uh, he will miss a long time for that, I mean flying in from from front and back, takes out the, the Boer, saves 2-1, but that's how the game ends. We have to talk a lot about Bayern against Dortmund. Um, because I watched Lask, I didn't see the first 50 minutes uh, and I saw basically all the glory of uh, Dortmund with Holland scoring already in the second minute. Uh, from a long range, range shot in the ninth minute, Azar really nicely assists him. He can just pull it in, in, into the net. And for once, Holland is also showing up in a big game against Bayern because I think the first uh, few few times I saw him, I always felt that he's actually not showing up. But now he really showed up. It is 2 0 toward Dortmund. Door, door, and then uh, right around the 24th and 25th, for me, that's the decide, uh, decider. Meunier is running uh, through on the right, right side. He has Holland free on the left. And he doesn't manage to get the ball to Holland. If that was the big chance to make it 3 0 and bury the game. But two minutes later, Leroy Sané, at that point already, I mean, Bayern after 20 minutes really started to exert a lot of pressure onto Tor Dortmund. And Leroy Sané was, ru was running while runs through. The defense puts it in, level them to 26, makes, makes it 1 2. And at that moment, I kind of had the feeling, yeah. It's gonna be a long day for Dortmund. Um, they were barely hanging, hanging on, and then uh, penalty is given, totally uh, justified because uh, there's a step uh, on, and Lewandowski converts it, and so uh, really, really great first half and although i only saw maybe the um 25 minutes of it but it was, was a great first half um and it 2-2 with both of the superstars scoring and the second half was took a little bit um more time to to, to develop it was quite even for a lot of time uh with Torn hazard missing a big one for dortmund but you know also bayern had the chances and the longer the game went on the more uh bayern actually took control of the game yes they didn't play in the midweek um a, uh, important cup cup game and Many say one of the most the, one of the deciding scenes have been Azar and Holland. Holland came out with an in, in injury because his studs kind of uh, made a <laughs> flesh wound, wound on his lower leg. Came off and suddenly Dortmund didn't have a focal point. And with uh, Torgen Hazar, off, although Ju Julian Brandt is um, you know a similar player, but I think Azar has, has has a little bit more pep to it. Uh, that kind of disrupted the game and then uh, Bayern at the same time can bring on Gnabry for Coman. Boateng also had to come off in, in injured and you know Jogi Löw was watching, he is considering uh, at least Thomas Müller to come back into the team but also for Boateng and, and so on. So have to, have, have to see how hard that comes. But Bayern thoroughly under control the longer the game went on and there was a time i think around the 80 85th, i thought maybe dortmund just can hang on for for, for the 2-2 but i sense kind of that there will be goals coming from Bayern late and that's exactly what happened um after a shot that is blocked the ball falls to koretzka who just takes it and it fits perfectly onto the post internet 3-2 Koretzko, former Schalke player, will be even more happy. And I, you know, uh, it has to be considered there as well. And then, of course, Dortmund tried to uh, score and go forward. Now, uh, uh, Davis uh, plays it forward, puts it to Lewandowski with a step over from Sané, 4-2. Game done and dusted, and so the superstar duel 
and it's not only with the Bayern win, but all the Lewandowski three, Haaland two, and more importantly, I think uh, Lewandowski is now on 30 goals. He has 10 games left in the season to hit the 40 goals by Gerd, Gerd Müller. That would be an amazing record. I would still find a way to show that Gerd, Gerd Müller is more impressive, but because I think the league was a lot more even then, but you know, what do I know at the moment? But I, if Lewandowski hits 40, that's a big, 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 big mark. Um, today, Köln and Bremen uh, won one. I think Bremen probably a little bit could be moaning that they lost points there. First of all, they were slightly the better team, and you know, um, especially after throw ins, uh, Köln had really trouble defending, so that is how they won it through Sargent in the 66 game. Uh, but the equalizer, especially, uh, Dennis really interferes a little bit with the goalkeeper the ball for Sion's Hector, who makes it 1 1 in the 83rd. Uh, kind of a contentious um, um, goal. Bielefeld, Union, and 0 0. So we have in the table now Bayern, of course, go back ahead of Leipzig. Uh, everything at top four remains the same. The winner is Leverkusen with that win over Gladbach, who are now on free fall. They even go ahead of Dortmund. Still, Wolfsburg and Frankfurt are given the bigger chances uh, finishing in, in, in the top four, but they better start picking up points again uh, and say that this um, is a little bit of a slide because I think especially Dortmund is definitely uh, capable. I mean, that loss will have hurt. But I think Dortmund at the moment looks very capable of racking up a lot of points. So both Wolfsburg and Frankfurt need to keep on going. On the bottom, uh, with Hertha winning, they actually got themselves a little bit out of trouble. Um, Bielefeld also picking up an important point. It's now Mainz who are in 17th. Um, it really seems... Köln, you never know where they are because they are also, but you know, uh, a little bit more breathing room for them with them picking up points. Uh, where is Mainz? Uh, yes, everyone got one point, but you know, it didn't move forward. And Mainz is probably against Schalke. We we'll would expect that they get more points. Um, if we look at the expected standings, you see the story that, that we've been talking all along. Bayern and Leipzig are for the title with Bayern firmly the, fav the favorites. And then we have four teams that go for the final uh, two championship spots and, and, and then the Europa League. We know that there's a cup also where Dortmund could uh, get a Europa League spot. Uh, then a broad midfield and then towards the bottom, um, yeah, Bielefeld and Mainz more towards uh, going, going down. Köln Hertha just staying up. Um, in the upcoming week, we have a makeup game between Bielefeld and Bremen. A big one for Bielefeld, because if they get a win there, then they uh, could actually move out of the rally, uh, out of the promotion playoff zone and would put Hertha down down there. But you know, Bremen uh, has not been that bad. And then on the weekend, I mean, a classic between Bremen and Bayern, but uh, it's not a classic anymore. Well, um, I think Dortmund against Hertha. You know, there are some games in there that I think are good, well sounds on, but there's, there's nothing really exciting. I think the biggest one is definitely Leipzig against Frankfurt. Um, Wolfsburg needs to pull pick up a point, points against Schalke. Um, and yeah, Stuttgart Hoffenheim, maybe. That's kind of a local derby as well. Moving on to Austria, where we have a cup final. Wolfsburg, Lusk. I mean, that was a game that I knew that will be a little bit tough with the way Lusk is playing with all the injury crisis, but also that there was a huge bust up in the Wolfsburg team with the coach uh, dro uh, dropping his captain already and then from the squad and two other players dropping him them from the squad. So absolute uh, crazy scenes and I knew Kind of, yeah, this will be then tougher because now they will only hold back and this is something where Lusk has trouble. And yes, Lusk had more control of the game whatsoever. Uh, I think Wal Wolfsburg barely had a chance, but Lusk also didn't have. It was a hard watch. The game is decided in overtime through a justified penalty. I have, I have to say that Wiesinger converts and this is the first cup final that Lusk reaches since 1999 when they lost to the preeminent team at that time, Sturm Graz. Now they have to play against Salzburg, who won 4-0 in Sturm Graz. Um, 
deserve it overall, but the second goal by Mwepu was a clear offside goal. They probably could have taken uh, the game in a slightly different direction. Maybe if that's not, no, 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 not given, but with 2 0, the game was done and dusted. So it's Lask against Salsa, but again, at the moment, I don't have much hope. But I'm happy that Lask finally, after this was the fourth semi final in five years, and finally we made it, made it to the, to the final. Maybe we can pull the upset in Klagenfurt. I'm personally hoping that they will allow spectators at that time because I really, really would like to go. I've been at the previous cup final, I really would like to go to that one as well. Uh, speaking of Lask in the league, another not so great performance <laughs> against Altak again, a team that they actually attacked Lask quite, quite, quite some. Uh, the goal comes through a clear offside uh, where Balic is sent, he's in clear offside, but then how Altak is defending, he runs in into the box, he's not challenged, challenged and puts it uh, in, in there. And Neva Subodic, former Dortmund player, puts it into his own net, because. Uh, but behind him was Michal, uh, yeah, was crazy. Altak had two big chances to equalize, I think once they even hit the bar, or ah, they did not hit the bar, the, uh, it was a great, great, great save, and, uh, and the other one had uh, two goal line clearances from, from Lask, but now said Lask also had uh, a good chance. I think Altak probably would have really deserved the point, but you know, I'm happy to take the point for Lask. Uh, in the top six uh, duel, it's basically between Hartberg, Tirol, and a little bit Austria win. Uh, Hartberg, Hartford win. But they get the win over Admira. Tirol seemingly would have gotten the, 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 the win. They got the uh, go-ahead goal uh, in the 76th after a goal had been already disallowed. And then in stoppage time, uh, Yeboah, who played just for Tirol, equalizes and uh, makes it 1-1. And now that uh, gives advantage to Hartberg, who also have a little bit the easier route uh, there on. Uh, Wolfsburg. The coach, as I said, uh, they had a lot of trouble. The coach actually stepped down. A uh, new, new coach. They win easy at Reed. St. Burton had a lead at, Sal at Salzburg in the 12th, but in the 18th it was 1-1. One, one. It ends 4-1 for Salzburg. And the big derby in Vienna ends with a goalless draw where actually Rapid had definitely more chances. Um, but, you know, Austria probably would have needed a win to actually really have a chance of uh, getting into the top six. Might be a little bit too little. Um, so here the table, it's pretty clear. The only thing that changes is Hartberg now moved ahead of Tirol and you see already a chance, a 76% chance of moving in. We already have four teams uh, qualified for sure for the uh, playoff round. And um, if you look at the expected uh, re regular season, you really see it's more or less decided. It's just is Tirol or Austria finishing in seventh? Everything and you know between tenth and tenth eleventh. Everything else pretty much clear. As for the final standings, Salzburg big favorites. Then it's a head-to-head -head between Rapid and Lask, where I unfortunately have to say Rapid has the they own Lask at the moment. But you know Lask can probably get more more points against the other pawns unless there's Hartberg in there, which I'm not so happy. About and yeah, we have to see uh, who is going down at the moment. It's Admira, although I'm not so 100% down about that either. Um, the round 21 is actually all games except for the first one, Salzburg Admira, because it has no implication for the final uh, regular season standings. All the others are played at the same time, although I think that uh, Reed Lasky probably could have moved as well because there is no way that this will have any imp implications there so yeah that was it big 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 one uh video as i said the happiest is that lask made it to the cup final for me personally however the way they performed it kind of leaves me a little bit cold and i don't have too many hopes with all the injuries that we have at, at the moment that we will be a really good opponent to a salzburg team that of course will try to annihilate us that's how it goes. So, bittersweet in that. In any case, I'd rather be in a final than being eliminated uh, once more. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like this. Please drop a line below what you thought about the games happening in Austria and Germany. And I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there. I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and click the little bell icon as it will remind you whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day.
拜。